that on this glorious, beautiful day, the service is amazing, filled with joy and clarity and peace. I know that Reverend Stacy lets the message, gives the message that we all receive. We receive it in our brains, we feel it, we hear it. It resonates with each and every one of us. Whatever it is that we need it, whatever it is I need it, I get it today. I know that for practitioner Selena, her power talk is powerful. And I know that as we go forward in this day, we go forward with peace and love and joy in our hearts and in our souls. I give, I give thanks for being here, for standing here. I give thanks for the revs. I give thanks for the musicians. I give thanks for all of the volunteers. I give thanks to you and I give thanks to me. And with a grateful, grateful, grateful heart, I release my word into the perfect working order of the law, and I know that it is done. And together we say, and so it is. My talk this morning is based on a book I read, an article I read a while back, and it stuck with me. And especially the last couple of months, you know, with all the different problems and stuff we've been going through here in Las Vegas and many other states and countries too. And it's based on this book, Living Beautifully, with uncertainty and change. Does that fit right right now, uncertainty and change, right? And so, Pima Chodron, she is an American, Tibetan Buddhist, and she's also an ordained nun. And I've read several articles and several books of hers. And this one just seems to res resonate with me right now with what's going on. When someone leaves us, we may bite the hook of grasping. When something unfair happens, we may bite the hook of rage. When we're disappointed, we may bite the hook of numbness. When everything we believe in seems like it has fallen apart and our lives seem to be a state of chaos, we bite the hook of despair, anger, and revenge. When lives are lost in floods, storms, and mass shootings such as the one we had a couple of weeks ago, or even recent fires, we bite the hook of grasping, aggression, anger, fear, and not being able to help ourselves or one another. That's why Pima, or Pima Chodron, famously introduced us to the word or to the notion of Shempa, which she defined as biting the hook of, how, of our habitual reactions, how we react to things that happen to us all the time. A while back, you know, with the shootings in the school, there's always something going on. And we play into it right away. Oh my God, how did that happen? Why don't we do this? And you're off and running with it. And who I was, I was really angry. And then we talk about the political arena. And that's just what it is, an arena. <laughs> Something going on every day. Turn on the news, oh my God. Do I bite the hook? Do I solve the world's problem with my thoughts? No one's listening to me anyway, it's just me and my TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I needed to take a look at what I'm doing. <laughs> Everybody we play into, we get in tune with the drama and the trauma and the chaos that's going on. Falling into our habitual reactions will not benefit ourselves or others. Biting the hook will not help, will not help us skillfully 
to protect the vulnerable and start our lives and our country moving forward as, again, as soon and as quickly as possible. Pima should suggest five things to look at. So let's look at not biting the hook of chaos. That's a tall order. You know, there's so many things going on right now. How do we keep ourselves in balance in this world of chaos? Number one, she says, remind yourself that generosity is a gesture of power. And what does that mean? Rather than scanning the environment for confirmation or denial of your worst fears, Scan it for someone who could use a kind word or a glance. Do something nice for the homeless teen. There's 3,000 of them. Help a senior find her car in 112 degree heat where she's turned around and don't know which way to go. Go to meditation at our church to center yourself, to go within. We have wonderful modalities here that can help you move forward when you're going through crisis like we've been going through. Whether we are swinging on the hook of grasping, aggression, or numbness, the best way to let go of the hook or get off of the hook is to help someone who is also swinging. It's good for others, but it's also good for me and it's good for you. When we are afraid, we feel powerless. Generosity is a gesture of power. And we can each use it. And that power is within. It's always with us. It never leaves us. We may turn our back on it, but guess what? God is always on time and always ready when you're ready to go within and listen. Remember, this is number two, that nothing is ever as good as you hope, nor as bad as you fare. Equal. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a minute, right? I work on one day at a time. One day. And beyond this, one thought. And sometimes one moment. And sometimes one heartbeat. But if I can't let go of the chaos or the fear or the anger or the aggression, I had to learn how to live in the present moment. That's what I need to be concerned about, right? This is why we practice meditation. Meditation is a path of serious warriorship. Going within, being quiet, being still. In a moment of chaos and all the stuff that's going on in the whirlwind, we can stand firm and know that within us is a power that is beyond anything. And that's God. It teaches you how to meet your experience on the spot. Without embellishment. I'm never one to embellishment. I don't know about you, right? <laughs> And that includes looking directly at your hopes and your fears. What do we want? What do we want to have happen in this beautiful, beautiful place that we live, that we call America? Something to think about, right? And number three, reestablish dominion over your world. That means your life, your home, your family, your friends, your workplace, your body, and your abilities is your kingdom. You have full reign here. This is your rulership. How are you living your life? I go to my spiritual home. I love my beautiful home. It's a place where I go to where there is peace and quiet. And your family. We need to love up on our family more. I call my sister and the brothers almost every day. Hey, how you doing? I love you. And really mean it. And you know what? If they don't call you, guess what? That's on you. Pick up the phone and call them. 
because that's what we need to do. Maybe they're busy and they say, I don't have time. But we usually have the time. I always pick up the phone. My sister said, oh, I was going to call you yesterday. But you didn't. <laughs> so I'm calling you today to say I love you. We're only promised today. We live in this moment. And we all need to know that. Love them up. And what about your workplace? You can be those shining light. You can bring more love. You can bring more peace to make your day feel a lot easier. And what are your abilities? What do I do to center myself to be at peace? I pray, I meditate, I walk and pray. I pray while I'm sleeping, I pray while I'm walking. I walk and I meditate. Because in these times, we need to be centered all the time. What can you do to help your world? I could focus on removing every obstacle that stands between me and my true work in the, in the world. What is your brilliance? What is your gift? Each can offer their special gift. Maybe your special gift is telling someone every day, hey, you really look beautiful today. Or giving someone a hug. Have you ever given someone a hug and they turn and look at you and say, oh my God, I really needed that hug today. I'm having a bad day. So in just that moment, you've changed someone's life. You've given them the opportunity to feel love. Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes, our founder, page 151.4 says, there is a place in us which lies open to the infinite, but when the Spirit brings its gift by pouring itself through us. It can give to us only what we take. This taking is mental. If we persist in saying that life will not give us that which is good, God will not answer my prayer. It cannot. For life must reveal itself to us through our intelligence. We need to check our thoughts. Because what we're thinking, we're manifesting. And that pent-up energy of life, which I feel even this energy every time you turn on the TV, you can feel it, right? I mean, this was bickering with that one, this one should be that one, and oh, this happened here, and this happened there. It's like, oh my God, stop it. The storm is going 150 miles an hour just by their voice and just by their energy and their reaction to what they're talking about. <coughs> 150 miles an hour is a mighty strong storm. A mighty strong storm of strong words said, said to one another, to each other, and to other people that we meet. We don't even know sometimes when we're just, just say whatever. The possibility of future human evolution work through man's imagination and will. The time is now, the place is where we are, and it is done to us as we believe. What do you believe right now? What is your belief? Number four, express your love for brothers and sisters. The tribe, Emma says, states on one level, this means recognizing the vast tribe that feel as, as you do right now. That there is no place in America, or far as that go, any country, hatred, racism, misogyny, anti-Semitism, homophobia, or religious intolerance. Each must reach out to each other. It's time to stop the madness. It's time to know that love exists. Love is more powerful than anything. We are all made from that infinite intelligence love. Affirm your friendship, but please don't stop there. You could also recognize that the vast, the vast tribe that does not feel as you do right now, that's okay, everybody has their own opinions. 
And I'm not suggesting that we get all snuggly with hate mongers, believe me. <laughs> That's not where I'm coming from. But to acknowledge that we are all Americans. If we move toward peace, tens of millions of our brothers and sisters feel our love. Just at the ripple in the ocean, we add innumerable steps to the path of the storm, to the path out of the storm, the path to peace and love. What if every day you just said, have a beautiful day. May you be blessed. May you be at peace. May you be loved. Can you imagine the ripple in the ocean? All people matter no matter what walk of life we come from. And finally, number five, Pema says, I like Pema. <laughs> She's a smart woman. <laughs> feel what you feel as best you can. Don't pretend you aren't scared, sad, angry, or shocked. We all felt those feelings the last couple weeks ago. I certainly have felt all these feelings, as painful as they are. I had to really take a look at all of them. Because in order to get through the storm, you have to understand. You have to feel. You have to allow yourself to feel those feelings. And one of the things I like about this reading is Pema says, sometimes when you breathe and take a deep breath, and you're feeling all that anger and that energy, and then you hold it for the count of three or four and then let it out. Let go all the anger, the fear, the resentment. And you start feeling the peacefulness that is within you. <clears throat> what is a real problem is to avoid what we feel. And then as humans tend to do, work it out on someone else, right? By the little find them. Biting that hook. This is very dangerous. We stand at the intersection of tolerance and hatred. It's not saying there aren't terrible people who should be held accountable for the things they have done, but biting the hook of grasping anger and numbness prevents us from seeing clearly the best course of action to bring peace back to our world and allow a world that works for everyone. What is your action of love and kindness? What is it that you have that you can offer so many people in this beautiful Center for Spiritual Living volunteer. You come, you greet, you love, we hug each other. It is my spiritual home. It is where I feel love. For me, when I decided to do something for the 3,000 homeless teens, a lot of them are going to school. One Sunday, I remember Reverend Stacy talking about that they never have enough socks. So what I'm doing for my act of love and kindness and compassion is to buy a package of socks from TJ Maxx, Woolworths, wherever you can find a pair of socks. And it doesn't matter what color they are, just a pair of socks and to put them aside and at, before Christmas to have our reverence deliver them to us. How many of you would love to just help and bring a couple pair of socks? Yes. Just to help our teens keep their feet warm during the winter. What an act of love and compassion if we all did this. Do you know how many socks we could have by Christmas? Yes. And just so you know, you know, I'm a shop, I'm a, a shopper that likes to save money, right? TJ Maxx has four pairs for $3.99. Or <laughs> five pairs for $5.99. And the dollar store has them for a dollar. And they even have Bobby socks. So how simple is this for a teen? Most of these teens are trying to go to school to better themselves, to bring themselves out of their environment. Can we help by giving them a pair of socks to keep them warm? So just bring them to the center and we'll have a place, a receptacle for them to drop into and then they'll deliver them to them. So in closing, 
I would like to read two quotes. But another book I wanted to show you is this thing called You. <coughs> this is my favorite of all book. I love this book. You know why? Because it has a lot of different circumstances that can help you when you're going through crisis that already have the issue and it has an affirmation and prayer to say. So if you don't know what to say during time of crisis or you're having all this stuff going on, your chaos going on, get this book. It's a beautiful book. I think they have a few in the books, so it's worth every penny. You can see I use it all the time. So I'm just saying, and then living beautifully, we can live life beautifully. Because where love is, God is. So, in closing, I would like to read two quotes. Tenzin Yasso, the Dalai Lama. I have found that the greatest degree of inner tranquility comes from the development of love and compassion. The more we care for the happiness of others, the greater our own sense of well-being becomes. Wow. And then the last one, Gary Zukov, Thoughts from the Seat of the Soul. This is one of my other books I love. I have so many. <laughs> love is the energy of the soul. Love is what heals the personality. There is nothing that cannot be healed by love. Nothing. So all of this storm, all it takes is some love. Let's allow our hearts to open to more love and send that love out, just like a ripple in the ocean that will spread and go beyond and beyond and beyond and beyond. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, Patty, Thank Dave, you. Brian. Angels for, um, for those of you that don't know metaphysically or higher thoughts. So calling all those higher thoughts. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning. There's a powerful presence within that is forever at peace. It is never it is never disturbed. It is love. Love is always the answer. My name is Stacy Hilton. I'm one of the co-ministers here alone with Reverend Dan, who's off today, and Reverend Cheryl. And our theme this month is love as safety. I guess it could be said to be ironic, right? October 1st. We here at Las Vegas experienced a tragedy. Anybody have anyone involved in that? Yeah. All of us, yeah. we're all one. And so, in traveling around the last few weeks, everyone, we're down the beach, everyone at Antelope Valley CSL, and everyone in San Jose CSL sends their love and their peace and their blessings. <coughs> they ask how we're all doing. <sighs> Las Vegas is resilient, we know that. But it's nice to know that everybody's thinking about us. And everybody knows. The truth is that we are divinely protected, always. And I'm sorry for those that have lost their lives in this tragedy. And I know also that something good is coming from this. I have to know that. Love as safety is our theme this month. Again, the affirmation that I have chosen for today. And some of you might recognize it because it's in the, a letter if you get a, ever ask for prayer and get a letter in the mail. There's a place within me that has never been disturbed, never bothered, is forever at peace. From that place, the answer is clear. I move forward knowing that truth about myself and all things unfold in perfection. All is well. Anybody believe that all is well? Of course. Of course. of course it is. It's all good because it's all God. Vegas is strong and we're helping it 
we're doing our part in that strength by being up, being the love. I have a video that I want to show, um, and you've seen it before, I'm sure. Miss Oprah Winfrey. She talks about the whisper. You know, in all of the years of doing the Oprah show, there were many days that I sat in my chair across from one or two or five or six or seven people, and I would be so frustrated because I just wanted to shake people sometimes and say, why didn't you pay attention to your life? I said on the show probably the producers tell me that they counted 33 times, but I know I thought it at least a thousand times. I would say, listening to your life as it whispers to you first so that it does not have to knock you upside the head with a brick or come crashing down on you as a brick wall is one of the greatest principles of life because there are many things that happen in life that are beyond our control, natural disasters, death, unexplained events, but there are also many, many, many things in life which we can control and become out of control because you're just not paying attention. You are sleepwalking through your life. And I have seen this so many times on the show. I wanted to take the guests and go, we're just to pay attention. So this is what I've learned and how I've explained it to myself. Life whispers to you all the time. Your life is speaking to you all around. From the time you wake up in the morning and every single experience that's coming into your personal space, into your physical space, all of those experiences are speaking to you. They're telling you something about your life and about your circumstances. It whispers, and if you don't get the whisper, <laughs> the whisper gets louder. If you don't get the whisper when it gets louder, it gets I call it like a little pebble, like a little thump upside your head. When I was a kid, if I was doing something my grandmother didn't like, she'd just turn around and thump me. She wouldn't even look at me. She'd just give me a thump, and I'd know. That's, that's my cue to stop it, or you, we're going to get worse. The whisper is the message. The pebble or the thump upside the head, usually it's gone into a problem. You don't pay attention to the problem. The problem becomes a brick upside your head. The brick upside your head is a crisis. You don't pay attention to the brick upside your head. The crisis turns into a disaster and the whole house brick wall comes falling down. Now I'm sure that none of you have had the brick wall fall down. I know that you haven't. I know that about you. It's funny, and I look, <laughs> When I think about how life whispers, it whispers through different things. It's all God, right? Mae McCarthy last week was fabulous. Don't you guys love her? She's fabulous. She talked about, and her practice I'm doing, I just started and I'm doing it every day. Doesn't, it takes me more than a half an hour, I don't know about you all, but it's definitely more than a half hour thing. And it's good, it makes me feel centered and calm and at peace. But May, one of the things she talked about, which was so funny, we all kind of giggled, where we all have this thing where we, well, not we all, but I will ask Siri a question. I'll ask Google, right? Something's going on. Google, how do I fill in the blank? Anybody else do that? Yeah. So just me. Okay. Sometimes. Siri, whatever the other one's name is, right? And so we, we have this thing where we trust this thing outside of ourselves, supposedly, but is it really outside of ourselves? It's all God, right? It's all God. But we're trusting this thing called technology. Sometimes I'm thinking, though, are we trusting it more than our own intuitive selves? Are we really establishing a trust within ourselves? Do we feel comfortable with our knowingness of who and what we are? And that we don't have to necessarily, I mean, it's fine that we do it, we don't have to necessarily trust a computer for our answers. <laughs> what a thought. Invention. 
<laughs> there is a presence that lives within us. That is love. It's always there, as Selena told us. Always. There's nothing wrong with using technology. There's also nothing wrong with us our trusting our intuitive selves. Dr. Ernest Holmes, page 146 of the Science of Mind textbook. The power within. Through spiritual discernment, we see that we have within us a power which is greater than anything we shall ever contact. A power that can overcome every obstacle in our experience and set us safe, satisfied, and at peace, healed and prosperous, and a new light and a new life. If God be for us, if energy be for us, if love be for us, who can be against us? Yes? Yes. Woo, woo! That was an hour. Sometimes a whisper comes from other people. <laughs> Sometimes it comes from technology. If we're believing in the love that is within us, that is always with us, then we know we are divinely guided, guarded, and protected when we stay in that space. I'm going to repeat my affirmation. There is a place within me that has never been disturbed, never bothered, is forever at peace. From that place, the answer is clear. I move forward knowing that truth about myself and all things unfold in perfection. Yesterday we had a lovely day at the picnic. And it feels so safe with us. I sit there and I've got classmates with us, right? People that know more than most people know about me. They know all my deep, dark secrets. I have people that also have taken class with me that also know my deep, dark secrets. And you all, because I tell my deep, dark secrets when I speak. There's a feeling of love, there's a feeling of safety. We're all one and we all feel that oneness within here. What a beautiful experience. As we sat out the day, it was a glorious, beautiful, wonderful day with great food and great people and the connection that we felt is unbelievable. And I just feel so blessed to be part of that. It is believable, Carol. You're absolutely right. It is believable. Because I experienced it. So I have a mental equivalent. But for some, they may not have that mental equivalent. There is a connection, there is a bond, there is a love that is exchanged and shared here. We are blessed beyond measure. Beyond measure. Speaking of deep, dark secrets, you also know that I hang out at the Trader Joe's wine table. <laughs> not a secret, I tell you all the time. I get great stories. I think I'm going to write a book about the Trader Joe's wine table stories. And it's wonderful because I get to experience, I love experiencing all of you, but when I'm there, I get, just get to talk to other people and embrace them and see what they're thinking and really get to look at how like-minded I am with those people that are around me and that the law of attraction really does work every time. It's not just in here when I walk through these doors that I'm going to meet somebody that's just like me. It's everywhere I go. And so I was at the wine table, not on the 2nd, I guess it would have been the, well, that was the 1st of October, because he had canceled the tasting. So that following Monday, we all went wanting to make sure that everybody was okay. It's just like a little group, just like we all come together every Sunday. We have the same little group of 10 or 12 of us that go every Monday, and some go every Friday. And most people know that I'm a minister, not all, but most. And we just enjoy talking about food and recipes and, of course, wine, looking at the colors, the tech, talking about the flavors, just that exchange, talking about food pairing, blah, blah, blah. First chapter. And so we just simply were together and at one that day and experienced the food and wine as all days. And this little lady, lovely little lady, she, I'm always impressed with her because she comes there every Monday to pick up groceries for her neighbor, which I just think is lovely when she looks out for her. And we kind of look out for one another. And I didn't see you last week. Is everything okay? 
And so she shared a story with me. She pulled me aside. She said, I know you're a minister. I said, and she, she doesn't go to church, doesn't attend any kind of center. And she just said, I just wondered if you could pray for me. My, uh, my niece was involved in the shooting. But you know, she's so blessed because she made it out and she was by herself and, and did have her cell phone. And she made it from this place to that place and she just followed her intuitive, that intuitive knowingness within her. She said, but I was so scared. And I'm scared for her because she's 24 years old. And how will this affect the rest of her life? And I just said, all is well. And I said, I'll say a prayer for you. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to be in Trader Joe's praying. Why not? There's nothing wrong with it. But I didn't think she would feel comfortable. So I didn't choose to do that. And so I thought about that that whole rest of the evening. And I got to the center the next morning. And I wrote that same affirmation that I've read. There is a place within me that has never been disturbed, never bothered, is forever at peace. From that place, the answer is clear. I move forward knowing the truth about myself and all things unfold in perfection. All is well. And so I didn't see her until the next following Monday when we go back and do our wine tasting. And I didn't even know the lady's name. And so I, I wrote, I typed out her name, I said, I hope you don't mind, but I wanted to give you this because you came to mind. I said, I'm not even sure that I spelled your name right. And she read it and she cried. And she just hugged me. And I said, did I spell your name right? She said, no. <laughs> she said, as a matter of fact, it's the wrong name. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I can redo the letter. She said, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And it was just the, the interchange that we had, the dialogue that we had, and for her to know that she's safe, her niece is safe, that all of us are safe, no matter what happens. Even those people that didn't make it out alive, they're still safe on the other side. It's certainly not what I want to see happen. So please don't misunderstand me. And I certainly don't think it's their fault or they created or any of those other things that science and mind can kind of, we can kind of figure out on the, on the, on the edge and, and go there. That is not what I'm saying. Maybe they signed a contract. I don't know. I don't know anything about all of that stuff. What I know is there's something wonderful that's going to happen from this. What I know is that my teachings and my thoughts about what happened and the interchange that I had with this other person felt really good. Like I was here with all you all. And she got it. She got it. We've got to listen to one another. We're all godlings. Just like you ask Siri for directions, sometimes a person is right in front of you that thing can, can give you direction. As Mae McCarthy said last week, Sometimes just ask for another lead, right? Sometimes the lead is Lauren. Sometimes it's Selena, Victoria, Kitty. Sometimes it's Karen. Sometimes it's Carolyn. <laughs> but the lead is always there. I've got to listen for it and be still enough in my mind, in my heart, as Selena was saying, to move to that place that moves me and gets me through to that next step. Not always easy, but it's simple. Foundations is going on right now. I've got some a crew over here, another one. Where are you, Marilyn? I saw you a minute ago. There you are. <laughs> what a fantastic group. Fantastic, just brilliant. That law of attraction again. That it's always working. <laughs> but we're talking about wholeness this week and perfection, and we're we're doing our prayers. They're just four weeks in and they're already demonstrating on that level. They're already recognizing that power within. They already knew it before. As May McCarthy said, we're just coming together to remember to remember who and what we are and our magnificence. That's simply all we do here every week. That's why it feels so good. We get to hang out with like minds 
and get to remember who we are and that we're always magnificent and that we're safe in our magnificence. It's okay to be magnificent. You okay with that? Yeah. Yes. So there doesn't need to be self-doubt. Now, it's, again, easier said than done sometimes. The clues, the leads are all over. They're all over. Many of you, all of you probably know by now that Reverend Show and myself were ordained a couple weeks ago. You know, and I sat through the process as many of us as practitioners, we start off with panels and it's like, oh God, another panel, I don't know. The good news was that this will be the final panel. That's the good news. But it was still a panel, right? It's the interview, and you're still going to have some nerves and some stuff going on, and ego's going to say, I don't know, Stacy. You know, but it didn't this time. You know, Lauren and Cheryl and myself took a class um, online, the Bhagavad Gita. So I can actually say that now, which I'm thrilled about. The cast of characters, this book is the Bible. It is a science of mind textbook. It is a sacred text that's older than all of them that still holds true, has very complicated names that I don't dare to pronounce. <laughs> and it kind of reads like all my children. I was the all my children fan back in the day. I mean, there's just this person and that person, and that person related to this person, and this person you know, has an evil twin, and this person does this, and, and you know, an evil weather machine, and all kind of stuff. But it's all about the same stuff that we go through today. The quote that I read, because we had a little homework assignment before we went to San Jose to our ordination panels, and the quote that I read was this, and we're supposed to contemplate it all week. On this path, effort never goes to waste, and there is no failure. Even a little effort towards spiritual awareness will protect you from the greatest fear. And so I went to that panel with that on my mind. I had really no nerves, really no thoughts of, there is no failure. I've done my best. This is who I am. You have a file that's probably this thick <laughs> to see all that in three years I've done. I love my center. I love this teaching. There's really nothing more I can do except for communicate that to the best of my ability without nerves to those three people that handled me. And that's where the aspect, that's where I came from with it. And so it was a success. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> surprise, surprise. We teach these things, we, and then we get in a little thing that seems a little, oh, I don't know, uncomfortable. And it's like, we're either going to do this or we're not. You can't be a little bit pregnant, right? <laughs> we either believe it or we don't. And when the, time, the rubber hits the road, where, what do you believe? And so that day it worked out. Other days, not so much for me. I'm still working on it. I think when I'm stuck, finished working on it, I'll probably be ready to move on to another plane, thinking that that's how that works. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. But I'm thinking that's mine to do, is to just do the best I can and to know who I am at all times possible. And when I can't quite remember, we call a practitioner or a minister or somebody else that can't, that does know the truth about me. <coughs> Meister Eckhart said, we should be able to rec recognize true and perfect love by whether or not someone has great hope and comp confidence in God, for there is nothing that testifies more clearly to perfect love and trust. There is a place in your soul that has never been disturbed, never bothered, is forever at peace. From that place, the answer is clear. I move forward knowing that truth about myself and all things unfold in perfection. I love each and every one of you. I know that each and every one of you practice that this week. Practice with me. Teach and practice, teach and practice, teach and practice. That's what we do. I love you. Namaste. Woo!
Right. If you all would stand and connect if you choose, if it feels comfortable for you. Oh, I just feel that love, that energy that's right here with each of us right here in this beautiful, safe space. And I just allow that feeling of love, of energy to go forth with me throughout this day, throughout this week. I take off the mask and just show who I am at every chance I get. I'm grateful. I release this word to the perfect law knowing it is true. And together we say, And so it is. I feel it in my body. I feel it. 